Okay, so we're here with Ronald from Sleepy Circuits. How are you, man? Hi, how's it going? Good. This is your first super booth, right? Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. You know, I've only seen it in the videos before, so super pumped to be here. Yeah. And what super have you brought? What have you brought to the show? What have I brought? Yeah. Uh, so I have the Hypno. It's been on the market for a few years. It's an all-in-one semi-modular video synthesizer. Uh, I'm trying to get as many people as possible into visuals. So the problem this is solving is kind of that, uh, you know, you can just get one box and do the whole show. Uh, it does everything from live camera inputs to sampling video to, as you can see here, some generative visuals. Uh, so basically you can get this box and run the stage just with this box. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And so what sort, what sort of features does it have? Like, uh, how do you control it? What, what does everything do on it? Yeah, so the basic idea behind the Hypno is that you kind of have two sides to it. There is uh, an A side and B side. The UI is kind of mirrored. And then you have frequency, uh, rotation, and wait, let me go to like a simpler shape here. So you can get lines, just to start. Uh, so frequency, rotation, and polarization, and sometimes it's Y offset on some of the shapes. The button changes the shapes, and then in the middle you have uh, feedback control. So as if uh, you had a camera pointed back at the visual. So it starts. So past a quarter of the way on the center knob, it actually starts to feedback, and then you have a hue control. But if you hold either of the buttons, it actually opens up a brand, a different page of controls that specifically controls that portion of the synthesizer. So Excellent. one side representing all the internal controls for shape A and the other one for shape B. Uh, so that includes internal modulation. So I can start making the shape scroll, I can make the shape rotate, uh, or I can make it do some wobbles here and it does different stuff based on which shape you have selected. And uh, the center one represents the feedback system, so I can actually zoom in the feedback, so I can get these kind of more pseudo 3D effects. Oh yeah, that yeah. looks great. And then there's five different feedback modes, which are all different. <laughs> so combining all of those things, you can get a really wide variety of crazy visuals. Great, and Let I can see the two, the two sort of sides interacting with each other. They kind yeah, of exactly. So internally, it has a, like an internal patching system. So you can hold this down. If you can see, there's green or red. So actually, I could unpatch the shape entirely, so it's just not there. Or I can feed that shape into this shape, and then you have modulation. Uh, yeah, but the, you great. know the video equivalent, not like. So it's kind of if you're familiar with a complex oscillator for audio, same idea but for video. And you Brilliant. can do cross modulation, affect the magnitude of that modulation. Uh, or like I said, you know, take them out entirely, which is helpful sometimes because then you can leave it just as a modulation. So then you can kind of make like another shape <laughs> as a result. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. And I see there's quite a few sort of inputs and outputs. I'm wondering whether it can be, can it be clocked? Can it be, or is it audio reactive in any way? Uh, yeah, so there's nothing internally that takes like a uh, clock because the the all the modulations are continuous, so it's not there's no phase to them. But uh, yes, it can take in triggers or CVs, uh, and it's the regular Eurorack range of CVs. So unlike some of the analog video stuff, which has a very specific CV range, this can just plug in the same LFO you'd plug into any of your other systems. So you can just split off your LFO and at the same time be synthesizing the video as well as the audio for like a synesthetic ah, type of effect. Oh, I see. That's yeah. great, man. That's excellent. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's, there's a lot in there. And uh, yeah, o over there we, ha we have some, I don't know if the USB here is gone. So yeah, so one of the shapes becomes like the input when you have, uh, oh, here's the USB. When the USB is plugged in, here, let me, 
there's an internal preset system. That's what I've been doing. I've been just recalling like a basic kind of patch to go back to something simpler. So here you can see uh, it's already modulating like crazy. Hold up. OK, so here I'll take out one of the shapes. This is just a video of a tree being looped. So you can just pop a bunch of little video loops onto your USB and run the show that way. And actually, the, you can turn on the help text and go through your files. And you can actually navigate folders as well. So you can make a folder for every one of the artists and then pick the folder that you want and pick one, of the, one folder to make specific thematic decisions for each of the performers. Great. And does it take its MP4 format? What formats does it take there? Yeah, it takes MP4s, uh, 720 by 480 is kind of the resolution the whole thing runs at because it's um it's not it's not super duper HD, but you know it's, it's a pretty though. tiny computer. Amazing! <laughs> so I'm and doing so the best I can. <laughs> I know that's perfectly good. I mean, I sometimes VJ in 480p and yeah, with yeah. the effects on top of it, like yeah. it, it and it also it gives incredible. it that kind of old school flavor, which. A lot of video people are kind of into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how much does that retail for, and, and where can people get it? Uh, so, uh, sorry, just the price changed a little bit. I believe it's going to be 640 now. I just did an upgrade of the case. It's a, Now it's a resin black case. Before I had a 3D printed case, kind of like that device over there. But now it's a really nice quality, smooth case. And this case supports all of the Raspberry Pis. So actually, if you already happen to have a Raspberry Pi, they're kind of difficult to get your hands on now. Yep. We do have a bunch in stock, but if you do happen to have one, we encourage people, you know, from like just the money and like ecological perspective to use their own if they can't find oh, it. Okay, great. So that's a little bit cheaper. I don't remember the exact price for that. Excellent. And then yeah. you have a new module, I believe, as well. Yeah, this it's not here. quite a module. Um, this is, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's kind of a unique kind of thing. I kind of think of it as like almost like a stopwatch format. So it's a wearable haptic MIDI controller. So this is a, a wireless uh, Bluetooth MIDI. And uh, for each of, so here, let me go to, and then there's pages of these knobs. So each of these is a different page of eight, eight knobs uh, for sending MIDI. And uh, when you turn these, you can actually, well, you won't see this on video, but there's a click, a haptic click for every single one of the MIDI values so that when you reach the end, there's no more clicks. So you know when you've reached the end of the value, even though you have an encoder. So trying to get That's around useful. the limitation of an encoder uh, and make it a little bit more like the analog knob. And I'm launching this with a mobile video synthesis app. This is a prototype of it. Uh, this is actually like a ray tracing engine. But Amazing. so yeah, the idea is that this is like extremely portable. You can put it in your pocket or even wear it around your neck or your wrist or what have you and kind of be like, you know, making visuals almost anywhere, honestly. <laughs> nice. And how does yeah. it is it is it going over Bluetooth or Wi Fi? How are they Yeah, so this is Bluetooth MIDI. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of just like um you know, wire completely wireless. You can be, and that's particularly useful, I think, for video artists because, you know, it's sometimes you're set up in a weird corner of the room or something. So if you need to step away a little bit to the side, you can be anywhere you want. Mm. Yeah. And in terms of like um, the controls that are on this, you kind of explained what each of the controls are doing there. What do each of these things do? What yeah. are you actually so, controlling here? I mean, obviously, it's MIDI controller, so it can work for visual apps or audio apps and you can map it to whatever you want this is like the prototype mapping i have here i'm gonna actually ha make like a blank version of this that i release so you can like write your own in uh, but for this one this is just um, uh, like um is it two sign distance functions like interacting with each other if that means anything to you. Basically, they're mathematical functions in 3D space that are interacting together. But that's just a prototype. It's not all actually mapped out yet. But right now, I have like everything from basically just flying around to uh, being able to control what, what the shape uh, is. And then there's kind of like a twist to the shape. But you know, this is kind of subject to change. Uh, the, the app is probably the newest part of this whole thing. I've been finishing up this uh, kind of new form factor device uh, 
most of this year. So, excellent, excellent. But this, excellent. there will be an app that ships with this thing. Cool, cool. And yep. and when will this be available? Uh, somewhere in the fall. Okay. Somewhere cool. around there. And do you have any par price in mind for it? I'm not entirely sure. I'm still finalizing because I, I need to, um, uh, you know, get up to date with regulations for shipping batteries and stuff like this. And I need to finalize the antenna design to make sure it's really reliable. Uh, but I'm hoping it'll be, I'm trying to price it similar to the MIDI Fighter Twister. If you know, it may be a little bit more expensive because it has the battery. So maybe about half, uh, about around half of what this costs. Okay, great. And I'm hoping to also get the app out at some price point to get the people who don't even want to commit to that into it as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm kind of good. making like a step ladder of uh, ha investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Well, they look fantastic. And Thank um, you. I think a lot of people are interested in visuals for audio now. And uh, yeah, you can really add a lot to a show with these two toys. So um, yeah. thank you so much for showing us, Ronald. Thank you. Thanks for checking it out. Yeah, appreciate you stopping by. Mm -hmm.